Hi everyone, my name is Amber. I'm Jasma, and welcome back to the Off the Treads podcast. This is the podcast where we speak with experienced artists and hear more about their journeys to getting to where they are today. We are thrilled to be welcoming the incredibly talented Miss Sylvia Chan. Sylvia, how are you doing? Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this uh, interview and looking forward to uh, helping young people discover what they love to do, especially for those that's going into the arts. Mm. Amazing. Well, that's why we asked you here. You have such, you're such a wealth of knowledge, we already know, and we're so excited to talk a little bit more about what you've done. Um, so to start off the episode, as always, we're going to give you guys a little intro on Sylvia and everything that she's done. So Sylvia is a professional artist and arts educator from Markham in Canada with over 10 years of experience in painting and teaching experience. She's done arts commissioned work. She's ran uh, community arts initiatives, and she's also the artistic director currently at the esteemed Creative Genius Academy. It's an art school based in Markham that's been voted the best in Markham two years in a row, and it's designed to help individuals realize their creative potential. So to start us off, um, we're going to ask you the blanket question of the day. Uh, what got you interested in art? Like what drew you to that as a passion? And when was the point that you realized that you could turn that passion into a career for yourself? So growing up, my grandfather actually is an artist. So he likes to draw and show me how to draw like monkeys since Ooh. I was younger. Um, so my passion or like interest uh, started when I was four years old. Um, so back then, my grandfather would teach me how to draw different sorts of animals. And my grandmother is an opera singer. Oh, so wow. she got me interested in like uh, performing arts, dressing up. Like I, when I think about art, I think about like painting, drawing, drama, uh, performing arts, dancing and singing. So as a kid, I didn't really categorize myself as just a painter. Mm. Um, so I think that's the beauty of like art that it can come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, throughout my young years, I took uh, different like art classes from different uh, instructors. And eventually I got into Univo High School for the arts program. So there I had some really amazing teachers. And after uh, my four years at Univo High School, I decided to go to England, London to study um, art and design. And there I had some very interesting teachers that definitely broke down the traditional ways of teaching and making art. So it's definitely more modern and contemporary art mm -hmm. uh, compared to like my classically, like my classical training at uh, Univo High School, for example. Uh, and then after my one year at art and design at uh, the UK, I decided to go into Montreal for my bachelor's of fine arts. So there I finished my ba bachelor's and during that time, I was thinking, what is something that I can do with my art? So I guess that goes back to your original question, uh, what, uh, what got me to where I am today? So as when I was in high school, I, I actually really enjoy like sharing my knowledge with young people or like my classmates. So my first ever job was actually teaching. <laughs> Uh, since I went when I was in grade nine and I was helping at the Varley Art Gallery as a volunteer mm -hmm. and from that on it led me to teaching like art and academics in like camps as a high school student. Um, so from that experience and also uh, finishing my um, Bachelor's of Fine Arts at Concordia University, I decided to go into uh, and get my Bachelor's of Education at U of T. Um, also because my aunt suggested it, it's like she was asking, <laughs> what are you going to do with a Bachelor's of Fine Arts? So coming from an Asian um, Chinese background, they expect you to kind of have a financial um, uh, backup, mm -hmm. <laughs> if yeah. you're, especially if you're going into like the arts. So I just remember growing up, my mom, uh, my parents have been thinking also, why don't you be like a lawyer, doctor, <laughs> accountant? We all heard Some... those ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. But I ended up sticking with the arts uh, because it's something I really, really love to do. And I think my parents got really convinced by my teachers when they see that, oh, she won so many awards and she's doing so well, blah, blah, blah. So I think that's also why I decided to go into Bachelors of Fine Arts. My parents are like, OK, if you really love this, uh, see what you can do. And I just like I just want to study art. I thought I was going to be like a full time artist painting everywhere. But I think my journey of going into bachelors of education, I discovered my second passion, which is like in education and teaching, because I really, really, really love the idea of like sharing my knowledge with like students and mentoring them towards their artistic dreams. Mm -hmm. um, because growing up, I had some really amazing teachers, more than a few that I can name. 
that has helped me throughout my journey, uh, developing my love for art and my passion for the arts. Mm -hmm. So, so after my bachelor's of uh, sorry, bachelor's of education, I was teaching at a private school, and then that's how my whole um, entrepreneurship started. Mm -hmm. It started with one parent that asked me, "Oh, hey Sylvia, you're so good with my kids. Do you teach any like?" Uh, after school art programs, you accept private art classes with your child, and I'm like, at at that point, I didn't have any like students, but I'm like, yeah, sure, I can teach your kid after school because I really enjoy teaching kids in general. So one um, student led to three students through their recommendations, and this was all happening in my basement. And I just remember wow. one day, my my basement ended up having like 35 students. Wow. And it, and it was just way too many that I could handle. <laughs> and and I remember it was making, um, in, in terms of like income wise, it made me more income than me teaching at the private school. So then mm. eventually within a year, I, I, didn't, I didn't teach at the private school. I just decided to teach after school uh, because it gave me more time to do my painting during the day because I, I just, I feel like as an artist or as an art educator, it's still really important to just do your own practice and get better in your techniques as well while mm -hmm. teaching. Yeah, so the 35 students in my basement um, did not, <laughs> I think it was just no, no room in there. Um, so I, <laughs> I uh, it was 2000, yeah, uh, 2015, I rented out my uh, office space to test out this art school idea. Um, so I really, really believe in testing out ideas instead of just jumping into things. Mm -hmm. I know there's some people that say go big or go home, but I think that comes with a lot of risk as well. <laughs> right, so if you, right. if you just do a commercial spot just like that, it, you can lose like a lot of money. Um, so I like to, the idea of bootstrapping and just saving the money so it can grow like slowly and making mm -hmm. sure things are actually... Uh, rationally, logically, logistically actually work out for the long term. Within one year, we doubled our number of students. Wow. So it went to 200 students within like a year. Yeah, so that's how I, I read together uh, the art and education. Mm -hmm. um, so now this year, 2021, we opened our second studio. So it's at the oh, Ivanhoe wow. location. Um, so we had, it's, it's been a very interesting journey because as a person, I really love learning and I'm always curious about what's the best way to make uh, the best learning for uh, young people. Mm -hmm. So we actually, we're in the process of making a new website. So we integrate academics uh, as part of our school uh, curriculum and programming. Um, so a really good artist example is Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> so he's really good at math, science and art. Mm -hmm. So we want to give that for our students as well to have an overall really good grasp about academics and the art. Uh, the art is really good for academics, but I, uh, sorry, the art is really good for like imagination, but the academics also help bringing that to life as well with the rational, like logical, mathematical, scientific, inventive um, outlook as well. Uh, so that's where I am right now. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack with everything that you just yeah, said. Incredible. I, I do want to take it back a few steps though, because you talked about in the very yeah. beginning how, you know, most families would expect some sort of financial backup when you go pursue something like the arts. Um, you know, it's really great that you ended up discovering your passion for teaching and combined it to, you know, going through all of that to where you are today. But I do want to ask, did you have some sort of plan on where you wanted to go before you found teaching when you went to, you know, pursue your arts education? So what exactly was your plan from the beginning? Okay, my plan was actually just to be a, a professional artist. So what oh. that means is like showing, showing my artwork through exhibitions, selling artwork, having buyers uh, purchase like G clay prints. Um, yeah, so just being like a full-time like artist. That was right. my initial idea. So there's ways that artists can also make a living with their like selling right. artwork, taking commissions. But the thing is for me, I think what's missing for that is it's like, I like to give back like mm -hmm. what, I, what I have learned with young people. I, I really love being around, surrounded by young people. I think they have a really good they're not tainted by anything so mm -hmm. it's like they're they're naturally very curious and innocent and I, and I really like that it makes me be in con connection with my when I was a kid and being connected with my my inner child right um so so I think it brings a lot of like meaning and to my life when I'm 
uh, being able to contribute to young people with my uh, my talent and skills. Uh, back to your question, Jasma, about what I wanted to be I, I, an artist. Um, I feel like I'm an artist now in a different way. Like I, I feel like being an artist is making your life like a canvas and painting it however it is that you want your life to be. Right. I love that yeah. analogy, the canvas analogy. That's because it's it is really true. You know, a lot of the people that we talk to as well, they ha they go in with one plan, but they're not really sacrificing their art. They're just finding mm. a different way to use it. And in a way, it's almost better than what they originally had mm -hmm. planned. That's what's so great, yeah. as you mentioned, about the arts is the versatility of it all. Um, mm. But, you know, in terms of your own artistic passion, so in the, when you did your bachelor's and you were studying fine arts and coming, I guess, now that you've had that experience and you're teaching, what, what kind of creative process do you go through when you create your work, whether it's commission, whether it's your own, whether it's teaching, what, what, what's that like? So it's a bit different for each of those. So if it's commission wise, because it's a painting specifically for someone and they have a particular request. Um, so usually my process is they send me an image of what they want painted. So if it's a portrait, they also let me know the size. Then I send them three processes. So the first process is, let's say within like a week. So it has the basic drawing, the composition. Um, so, so that's approved by them or they can give me suggestions because I don't want to, because being a commissioned artist, uh, you don't want to come across a problem where you give them an artwork, it's already painted and they, they don't like it. Right, <laughs> so right. you have to go back to uh, part one. So I, I've been through quite a few mistakes as, uh, as an artist doing commissions where I'm finished and they gave too many, um, suggestions uh, and I have to go back and change things. Second process is I have the colors chosen for them. So the basic layout of uh, the colors all chosen. If anything they want me to change in terms of color, they let me know in that second process. If it's all approved, great. We're going to go to the third process with, which is adding all the details. And then that usually that goes smooth sailing with the mm -hmm. commissions. Okay. They, they know what to expect and they get what they love to have hanging on their wall and then that's all good for commissions uh, if it's for my own personal paintings um, so it depends whether i have two um two roots uh, uh for in terms of like my personal painting so it's either something very creative like my origami uh, pieces something that's a bit more uh, painting of myself in different positions something mm -hmm. a bit more creative then i usually take um like inspiration from what I want to kind of say to the world about how, how I'm feeling this year or about like a particular subject. Mm -hmm. And then I take uh, different pictures of myself from different angles or people from different angles. And then I usually like to put people in uh, nature because I feel like um, as a person, I, I, I feel like sometimes we're too stuck inside enclosed spaces. And I really like to be just out there and connected to my uh, natural self or my nature. So I put nature in my environment a lot in my personal paintings. If it's the more tech technical part, it's very classical. So it's drawing exactly how something looks like, finish it exactly how it looks like as well. So, so that I just choose an image and just do it technically really well. So it looks exactly like the image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's the two routes I would go for my personal uh, artwork. That's a lot of very informative knowledge here. Um, I think it's really nice you walk through <laughs> all those steps. So I think I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the education that you received, because I think a lot of that came from learning from your teachers that you spoke about earlier on and learning from the different institutions that you attended. I think it would be really helpful to kind of hear about the process of applying for post-secondary programs going through especially since you you went to you know the uk montreal lots of different places mm -hmm. to study as as well so how did you learn how to apply to those places and what was it like to go through all of that education from the institutions you were at okay so it's very funny that you asked that because uh, currently we do help students with their um, teen portfolio to get into their dream school oh that's great um in a general way so it depends on what the school they're applying for and what their uh, portfolio requirements are because it really depends for example if it's like uh U of T architecture they only need like one portfolio piece um and and that's optional but if it's like for example like um waterloo 
uh, for architecture, then of course they need more um, uh, portfolio pieces for that. So for me, uh, so I kind of, so back then, um, the UK actually came to Canada to interview people to get into their school. Um, so I was actually accepted on the spot uh, oh, wow. for the UK. The, the interview process was uh, definitely not like now because it's COVID times. <laughs> right. um, so yeah, I kind of went through it a little bit easier. Uh, but the process in terms of like the applying for it with your portfolio is still the same in terms of like the online process. Yeah, so I went to the UK for the, my one year. It was it was very interesting teachers. <laughs> what do you um, mean by that? You said that a couple gonna, times we're gonna, we're gonna now. We're going to dig into this <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, so, so basically I, I grew up being like classically trained and having right. things very technical. And then when, when you're in the UK, it's like, <laughs> it's like they, they really break you down to oh. the very basics. I, I didn't really personally had a really good experience with that. I, I think it comes back to the teacher. Um, so the teacher I had, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so no, I, I love the way you're describing <laughs> the teacher. I don't even know how to say it, but the first thing he said to me when I was in his class is, all, all I see is a floating head. Can't you do anything more to it? <laughs> like in that sassy way. Oh, Ooh. so he um, went full like movie art teacher. What we see sure. in this like, like movie art teacher where they're always like, oh, you can't do anything. You know, those, the arts people that we see in movies that sometimes they kind of glam, like exaggerated <laughs> saying all the teachers are mean and everything so you had that experience yeah i did have that experience in england london oh um God. yeah so yeah i went from if you see my artwork in my uk experience i went from traditional detail to like <laughs> blobs of art <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah uh yeah my i remember my teacher he said yeah traditional art teachers they ruin ruin students <laughs> Um, oh. They force you to believe in, oh, there's a certain way to make art, but there's no way. That way I mean, right. there's some truth in what he says, but the way he taught was just, I, I don't think it was a, a way that I liked being educated to make my art. Um, so basically he said, don't look at any, any references, just do it completely from your imagination. Think about your psyche, psychology, <laughs> and just make some art. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was very abstract. Uh, but but believe it or not, he he actually made me not like art oh. <laughs> from that whole experience. So I don't think it was a really good experience having a teacher like that that kind mm -hmm. of makes you unsure of yourself and uh, right, right. yeah. So the weird thing is when I was in the UK, I really I got into break dancing. I really love break dancing. Yes, we're then. gonna but, we're gonna talk about this because that's when I were so <laughs> we excited. Were amazed. We were so, We found out. <laughs> You're yeah. like a triple, quadruple threat at this point, everything yeah. that you do. So we're, we're totally going to unpack that as well. Yeah, yeah um, I'll answer that later then. Yeah, so I mean, on the plus side, I explored art in ways that I would have never done before. Mm -hmm. Blobs, abstract way. Even my friend, uh, Matthew, knew that I did not like abstract art when I was younger. But suddenly I ended up doing it when I was in the UK. So I, I explore things outside my comfort zone. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I, nice. I guess that's a good thing. Yeah. I, I do wonder if you were able to use that experience of, you know, going from super traditional technical type of arts to super abstract. Were you able to kind of combine that somehow to form your style of art? Was that like helpful, even though it wasn't the yeah. greatest experience? Yeah, that's a really good question, Jasmine. So the funny thing is, um, I do combine abstract and realistic oh, art okay. now. So it kind of works out in the end, but it, it was just a bit extreme when I was in the UK. <laughs> it was like no traditional, just abstract. Um, the moral yeah, of the was... story is don't go to art school in the UK. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. I, I have students in the UK. They're having a blast. So it depends on the teacher they have. Okay. Too. That's, that's the moral of the story. And the style oh gosh, of art yeah. that you enjoy, right? Cause I'm assuming that was just super different for you as a traditional art type of person being yeah. exposed to only abstract i guess that kind of contributed to the shock factor yeah. of it all <laughs> it was a it was definitely a shock factor um so yeah so i went to montreal so the funny thing is that um in montreal they they kind of expect me to go back to my first year for a bachelor's of fine arts but i told them oh but i have credits that i finished from the uk mm -hmm. so i i had to transfer some of my credits uh from fine arts to um the montreal uh, university so, so i had like an interview with uh eric simon i remember his name 
Um, so there, during my interview with him, he said, oh, how was your experience in the UK? So I told him the, my experience. <laughs> like, let me spell um, everything that happened. Yeah, I did. Um, and then he transferred some of my credits uh, to Montreal. So I was able to go straight to my second year of my Bachelor's of Fine Arts. And the funny thing is I ended up having him as my teacher for my second year. Oh, Great wow. teacher. Yeah, I really have a fun uh, experience with him. Um, but yeah, so it was just a phase, teenager phase. Uh, with my UK teacher, I, I just ended up really not liking art. It was just a very uh, um, teen phase, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> yeah, Montreal, it gave more structure, so I, I like that part of it. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's learning is a bit different. I think mine is better with a bit structure and a bit more uh, creativity along with it. That was a but, but from the UK experience, experience <laughs> yeah, from, from my UK experience, I learned not what not to do as an art teacher. Okay, um, <laughs> so I guess silver that lining you as an arts educator. Yeah, the silver lining in the situation. Exactly. Do you have any, I guess, tips for aspiring art students to direct them somehow in how they should pursue post secondary? You know, what would you give in terms of advice of students who do want to go to art school? Um, so not all teachers are correct in what they <laughs> teach you. So I think that's the number one. I, I actually still tell my students that as well now. Like not all teachers are correct, whoever you have, even me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also kind of want my students to think for themselves. If there is a particular style or a way that they think is best for them in terms of learning, uh, just do it. Um, uh, believe in themselves is something that is I encourage my students to do. Because sometimes like my, I have students that second second question themselves and their thoughts right. and processes and I think it's important to just kind of build that confidence in their inner uh, self uh, that hey this is what I really want to learn uh, just go out there and find the right teacher to kind of push them to learn it in a way that makes them improve not <laughs> not improve <laughs> or lower their self-esteem so right. yeah we kind of think again the whole debate around arts education like post-secondary there's always those people who say you don't need arts university or oh. arts, you know college or school and some people say it's amazing because you can hone it so i guess you got the the bo both experiences of that and you can kind of attest what i guess i can ask what what would be your opinion on that debate <laughs> oh okay that's, that's a, a good one <laughs> that's a fun that's a good one actually um so i have i have Okay, so it depends on the student that is asking right. me too and their experience. And the, some some students, I would actually tell uh, they don't need art school to just be an artist, which is also there's a truth to that too. Mm -hmm. uh, there's many artist friends I have that never went to an art university, never did any art training, but they're selling their artwork, making a living out of it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like school is just something that <laughs> that's subjective. Cool. Just paying them for the money, yeah. Um, but if, if they tell me that their career is something that is really uh, art focused, like in the technical aspect, mm -hmm. uh, then I would recommend like an art school. Like for example, architecture school, that's definitely for sure if they want to be an architect and making right. buildings. Uh, interior design, uh, also if they're working for an interior design firm. But like I have mixed feelings about school as something necessary for a career though. Mm -hmm. uh, because That's I have true. many friends that are also very successful. Um, I actually have a friend um, that always wanted to have like a degree in design, but right. he was not able to like have a design. But he's working design projects at the moment without yeah. having that schooling. So, um, so it's just like that paper. It, it really depends what they're going into as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I, have, I do have mixed feelings about it. Some some students. I really don't think they need <laughs> an art school to go have a side job or like have a career in the arts mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. uh, because I feel like having being an artist, it could be something that's on the side. So they yeah. don't have to go and have it. Um, so maybe have something like graphic design degree or something else and then doing side on uh, art on the side is it, totally fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you ask me whether I got a lot from my whether I learn a lot from my um, art university, I would say no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you um, wish you had just gone was... straight into teaching then? Um, it, I could have went to a bachelor's of education. That is a degree I definitely have to have mm -hmm. uh, for doing what I do because parents do ask, what's your credentials? I'm like, 
okay, I'm OCT qualified and they feel safer to have True. their kids around <laughs> right. me. Right, okay. So that I think sense. that's that's a yes. And I think the Bachelors of Fine Arts help um, in terms of like being an art educator. But being an artist, I don't think it's necessary to have it though. Like, um, yeah, because right now in universities, um, art is really, uh, depending on the class and the teacher that you have, it's, it's uh, hard to say. Most of them, they give you, oh, here's a project, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. According to a project, I'll mark you. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it really depends on the school that they go to as well. Uh, Rhode Island's really good, though. I heard that really good comments about that one. I've heard actually comments. I'm not in the visual art world, but I've actually heard comments about the Rhode Island school as well. So mm -hmm. if you're interested, it's one of the best. <laughs> that may be something. Maybe something to look into. We've got the stamp yeah. of approval. Yeah. Yeah. Right, like well, Rhode well, Island, have few students there. They they learn a lot of new techniques. Um, OCAD's good for like I, I think design. Again, I think it depends on which program they're going to. I'm talking yeah. more like fine arts. Mm, so right. fine arts, I think some do not really need it for being an artist, like a like a fine art artist. Mm -hmm. Have you dabbled yeah. in different regions of art, like design and graphic design, like you spoke about? Um, I think it's not my forte. I'm more traditional, like painting and drawing. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a traditional artist. Um, but graphic design, uh, we have we hire people for that. Yeah. <laughs> so We've got people who at. have that. Right, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll focus on what I'm good at. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's great. But, you know, continuing on with this whole talk of, actually speaking of, you know, the Bachelors of Education and going into that and teaching, you're also the founder of a nonprofit arts, arts organization. It's called Paint a Smile. So Paint a Smile yeah. is a nonprofit committed to providing arts workshops to kids in need in the community. Um, and as you say it, so they can learn to be confident and unleash their creativity, which is an incredible mission statement. So talk to us a little bit about how Paint a Smile came to be. Um, so as a, as a kid, I actually had like a learning disability. Um, so I spent most of my um, elementary school years being put in a separate class for English oh. and sometimes math mm -hmm. uh, because I learn a bit slower or I, I would say learn in a different way. Mm -hmm. compared to like the the norm average uh, student so so because of my experience growing up thinking oh my god i'm not as smart as other kids or like in, as intelligent um I, I decided to create this nonprofit paint a smile so those kids that have experienced similar things as i have um for them to use art as a way to build their confidence so that's what i i wanted for for kids and and the disability part is there's so many different types of uh disabilities physical, hearing, hearing um, as well. And um, yeah, so I just want that nonprofit to help those kids in general. Um, but yeah, so I think from my experience with that, I just I just learned that people learn differently. Mm. Doesn't mean that I'm less intelligent. It's just <laughs> I my mind thinks differently. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and I think art helps and, and a the lot funny with thing, that. Yeah, I think art yeah, helps the funny a lot thing with that is, as well, right? Yeah. And, the, and I think uh, most entrepreneurs, or uh, quite a few, actually have learning disability growing up, which is yes. kind of funny. They think differently, so. Mm. And I guess that helps a lot uses. with like the creativity part of art, because I think when you think differently and you create things that are more unique in a certain way, and I think that, I guess that propelled a lot of the creativity of these people as well. So yeah, that's really cool to hear. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the nonprofit, so, uh, so it came about, uh, I think it was like, I, I could be wrong, but it was around like seven years ago that I got a team and we made the nonprofit. Yeah. Uh, so we were able to like reach in to kids in hospitals and uh, different uh, schools like York Region, Toronto School Board. Um, so I think within the last two years, because um, our members got a little bit busy with like our own like initiatives and companies. Right. So. So at the moment, it's funny that you brought brought that up. Um, so we're actually so it's so Pain of Smiles changed to like a, a foundation where we help youth wow. and give funding out. Uh, right. But at the moment, though, um, so Creative Genius, we're actually thinking of like creating a, a nonprofit uh, for especially youth that doesn't have the financial means to actually attend after school programs oh, like art or academics. Right. Um, so yeah, so so that is a new <laughs> new nonprofit that is currently being in the brainstorming stage up right now so yeah so paint a smile i would say it's given to um, more Catherine, who's uh, managing it and like doing the um 
uh, the funding aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm actually creating in the planning stages of creating an, um, a nonprofit specifically for uh, youth in financial need. So mm -hmm. that yeah, is... that's another project. Oh. <laughs> okay. Just keep them coming, please. Cause these are, oh my God, you're helping so many people by, by creating these and it, it truly is so amazing. So thank you for doing that. And I mean, on that topic, you talk a lot about arts education and that's something we talk a lot about actually on this podcast as well is that's something that Jasmine and I specifically find very important is the Definitely. impact of arts education, even in our mainstream educational, you know, curriculum and, and how important that is. Even, you know, if you don't want to go into the arts, if you just want to do it as a hobby. So how in your eyes does the arts kind of facil facilitate that or acts as a, a catalyst towards educational growth for youth? Um, so now because I, I've seen I've seen students that focus mainly on the academics uh, it depends on what it is too because I feel like science there's a very inventive creative imagine imaginative aspect to science mm -hmm. um, which I've seen students really enjoy I, I think the arts um, let me think about that I think I think it brings out like a culture aspect of yes. Yes. Um, people coming together exploring something creative it doesn't have to be just painting or drawing it could be like performing arts like uh like communication could be an art as well right uh but i feel like the arts have a way of bringing people together in a way that is very different than for example like math okay <laughs> um no I shame to math. Math together by math i can say that study groups yeah, <laughs> yeah but like I, i've seen like art it, it just brings in like uh like the creative aspect, problem solving aspect of like human nature. I, I think it just, uh, yeah, it just has a way of making people think outside the box and in, in a, in a non, not, not a box way. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, it helps people think outside the box and bring bridges people together mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, in the community. Mm -hmm. Um, in the culture aspect, I would say. <laughs> yeah, and you've no, branched great. out to a lot of different art forms as well. So just to name a few, break dancing, which is honestly, we again, <laughs> Evan and I Jasmine checked and that I was out. I'm so excited, I can't even we describe were, it to you. Yeah, and, and you know, martial arts, performance arts, drama, painting, sculpting, media, like mixed media, all those different types of arts, and specifically the break dancing, which we were so impressed by. You know, you've been doing it for five years and even competed in tournaments oh. internationally. Um, just I guess naming off these, yeah. Oh, sorry, we we have to mention where she's competed: oh. Baltimore, Paris, Hong Kong. Yeah, you've gone <laughs> places, honey. With this is incredible. Yeah, so, it's like, so sweet. Being um, so, I guess, artistically versatile. How has that helped you? in your career and how, why do you think that's like been such an important part of everything you do um so i i find that for me like art has always been a way for me to communicate with other people like how i'm feeling my emotion because as a kid i because of the language thing i was not able to use that like language as a way to communicate so mm -hmm. i use art instead um so when i'm feeling sad i will usually like color it blue or purple so instead of like sharing with people, something I would often do as a kid is I would just draw it out on paper. And also being coming from like an Asian background, my parents are always like working and very hardworking parents. So I usually don't see them uh, growing up. So I would usually just use art um, to just express myself and have fun. Uh, that goes along with like dressing up, acting, drama, <laughs> and right. singing on my own. Um, actually, can you ask your question one more time? Oh, I guess just how has that helped you in your career being in, into so many different branches of art? Uh, so, so in the moments of life, like when I'm in my really down moments, I think of ways to uh, what, what I think of what would make me happy. Uh, I remember one time when I was coming back from UK, I was so depressed because <laughs> of this teacher I had. And I was like, oh, teacher. art is not for me anymore, <laughs> okay? That UK remember... teacher, we're going to brand him on this podcast, <laughs> that one UK teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, went, I remember I went to the art gallery of uh, Ontario. I was just like sad, looking at, oh, my goodness, art is not for me anymore. <laughs> and then, and then 
I, I think I, I started thinking about like other ways, other forms of art that I really enjoy. I'm very fascinated and curious about. And, and every time in any like dip down moment, I always saw my, my, my solution would, would always be some form of art that would make me happy. Um, so whether it be dancing or drama. So in terms of your answering your question, I feel like the art make me like a better person, building my patience, uh, persistency and getting things done. I think those were skills that I learned growing up, even just finishing an artwork. So that has always helped me like think outside the box and problem solving my own issues. Uh, that's a, actually a good example. Uh, so yeah, I use that problem solving and creativity to problem solve whatever things that problems that show up. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, on yeah. that note as well, I'd love to know as a professional artist, and again, as a professional dancer and a performing <laughs> arts and all these other industries, um, what are some challenges that you face being in the professional world, I guess, as opposed to just having it as like a, a hobby, hobby or something like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are you are you asking in the visual arts or dancing or martial arts? Or... It could be any of them. If you want to any? focus on visual, you could. Yeah, and, and the um, entrepreneurial journey as well, like starting your own businesses, teaching art, or some challenge along that way. I, I feel like there's some parts of it is like being a female, like being a girl. Mm. Um, because, uh, what is a girl? Oh, yeah, I remember. Uh, when I told my mom I want to run a business, and she's like, are you sure? Are you, are, can you even do that? Oh <laughs> like, gosh. blah, 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 blah. And she's like, oh, shouldn't that girl be like this and this and that? <laughs> like, oh, and then I'm like, uh, no, mm -hmm. a girl can be any way that they want it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, girls can also have big dreams as well and also be really successful, first of all. Um, so be, growing up, I'm also, I was a very big tomboy. So when I see things that guys can do, and there's not that many girls, I'm like, hey, girls can do this too. Mm -hmm. A prime example is when I first saw uh, people break dance, it was at a church, and it was just all boys, right. no <laughs> girls. And I was thinking in my head, hey, I can do this too. And I, and I saw dancing as a form of art, so I was really connected to it in like an art level. Right. Uh, but besides that, uh, there is not that many girls that do break dancing as well. So I was very competitive with guys specifically. <laughs> if they can't, they tell me I can't do something. I'm like, I'll prove you wrong oh, <laughs> because I like that. Can do this too. <laughs> oh, but it's amazing. Yeah. So I remember when I first started breakdancing, there's so many guys that would be like, they wouldn't even help me because they're like, oh, it's just a girl doing this. And it just got to a point where, um, yeah, it's just, there's so many things I, want, uh, I could mention about that. But uh, so when I went to Montreal, I was practicing almost like every day uh, mm -hmm. because I really love dancing. And yeah, like I said, there's just, there's boys that would just go in and it's like, oh, a girl that is dancing. Oh, she's probably there because to get attention from guys or something wow. like that. Yeah, there's a few like that when I started uh, dancing. Um, but I was not, I was not interested in them in that way whatsoever. <laughs> um, so I just continued practicing. And then there's a, a dance crew that uh, that recruited me into their dance crew. Um, so it's a Deadly Venoms crew. So yeah, so I, I'm in. I've been in their crew for over ten years. So I've been actually dancing for over ten years since I discovered it in high school. Wow. Um, oh. Yeah, I'm still dancing right now too. It's a it's a fun hobby, despite my age. <laughs> <laughs> no, art is yeah. ageless. But I think that's exactly. so interesting. Yeah, exactly. It's so interesting because, you yeah. know, you think about art, like, it's such a creative space. I wouldn't think, you know, gender gets in the way of that, right? Because expression in that sense, I, I feel like there has been a lot of, you know, female minds that has thrived in the art world as well. So, you know, I, I didn't think that would be something that still but it is. comes I in the way. I guess that's the reality that <laughs> we need professional artists to tell us that it's still happening, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and also like being an entrepreneur too. Like I do have some. Okay, like a prime example is like, like for the opening of the second studio, like, um, like there's some contractors that come in and they're like, oh, who's the owner of this blah blah blah, and I tell them it's like me. Sometimes like I can I can tell that they're like, oh, how can she own like this right. whole property? So it, it's just like these these little side things. I know they don't say it, but like I can feel it sometimes. Oh, you know, um, when, it, when it's happening, you know, yeah. 
Yeah, it's like, oh, sometimes it think, oh, girls are like clueless or something, <laughs> something like something like that. Mm -hmm. How do you deal I with know. that then? How do you, I guess? Uh, I don't cool. focus on that so much. Like, I'm a very optimistic person. Like, I see the best in people. But mm -hmm. sometimes that's also my weakness as well. Sometimes I don't see all the not so good stuff about them. Uh, but yeah, I just focus on the positive. I focus on my strengths. So my strength is being optimistic, being, seeing the brighter side of things. When life throws you lemons, you put like make lemonade. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would say I would say that's the, the best thing I would say. Have, have you uh, found that your art has been an outlet for that in any way? Like, has have you been able to find like for those challenges or struggles? You know, trying to rise above, even like with breakdancing or with visual arts. Have you been able to use that as an outlet for that? Oh yes. When I'm stressed, I usually dance <laughs> or I make art. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's always like a need for me to express myself. Uh, if I don't do art for like, let's say like a month, that's really stretching it. <laughs> like yeah. I would either do art, like um, yeah, art or dancing. I, I dance like three times a week, regularly, oh, wow. uh, sometimes four. Um, but it's like a physical fitness, also. But I really love the artistry of it as well. Same thing when I went and did martial arts. It was like wushu and taekwondo. Mm -hmm. Like wushu was more like artistic and creative, and that's why it's like more performing mm -hmm. arts. So I, I I was really into into that. Yeah, I still really like that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, lo I'm I f I think it's great that we touched on that topic. <laughs> you know, to address <laughs> yeah. the realities of this world. Yeah. I guess to just wrap things up then. We always like to ask advice from our guests to, due to their experiences in the world, and especially you as someone who has experienced basically all there is, right? The education part of it, building your own business, even the sexist people within the industry. <laughs> um, so what are the advice, what's some advice that you would like to give to people listening, even if it's people who may not necessarily want to pursue an arts career or just interested in the arts, what are some things that you would like to say to them? Um, so something we often tell our students is uh, do what you love and love what you do, uh, because eventually along the way, you'll find uh, routes to get to your goals and your dreams, and you'll meet the right people along the way. The more you kind of share what you want, uh, people will just know that about you, and then they will tell someone else kind of like a referral sort of thing. Right. Uh, so I, I really think uh, doing what you love and loving what you do is really, really important because that'll make you very happy in the end. Uh, so I think I think for me, I kind of something that end goal I want all my students to be at the end of the day is being happy. Um, also for staff that I have as well, like being happy is really, really important <laughs> right. because that makes the world a better, better place and it makes them like a better, like, like when people are happy, like it's good to be sad as well too. That's also important to note. Uh, like if, if life was like a canvas, it's good to have experienced the blues, the purples, the yellows and red, mm. all the range of colors. You don't want right. to just experience just yellow because when you have just yellow and experience just yellow, you kind of lose the essence of like feeling how purple and red and yellow would feel like. Mm. So having a touch of all sorts of color in, or shade like black is also really uh, important to have. So have an overall colorful uh, piece of canvas for your life. <laughs> yeah, well, well rounded. That is really important. Incredible. Sylvia, thank you so much for being here with us. It was such a pleasure talking with you and hearing everything that you're doing. You're doing so much for the community. And, you know, Jasmine, and I always say this, but hearing from real artists who are not only passionate about what they do, but are trying to make everyone else just as passionate and in helping give back that love of the arts to other people is just extraordinary so we applaud you so much for what you do and again thank you so much for talking with us today oh you're so welcome that was really <laughs> nice thanks amber and jasma yes yeah, so We're please gonna... make sure to check yes sylvia all the links on all of <laughs> every yeah. links go check out her breakdancing account please as well because Jasmine and I It'll blow your mind, all just like it blew our mind. Oh, did you see <laughs> the video? We yeah, did. We did yeah. a little, like, uh, what's it called? Watch Scroll stash, through. where we just went mm. through. You are, yeah. you got talent, honey. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, thank you. It was amazing. I'll tell you how old I am, too. But, yeah, I'm like. <laughs> this is, this is okay. top secret information we're getting on this podcast. You, <laughs> Only for the viewers. You never guess. <laughs> you are incredible. Um, yeah, so please make sure to check out Sylvia um, all over there. And. If you are an aspiring art student and want to venture into the arts, 
um, or the visual arts, you can go check out Creative Genius Academy. They're hopefully opening up some new locations as well. They are an incredible yeah. academy for you to hone in on your skills. Um, and then with that being said, thank you so much for listening and watching this episode, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Everybody. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, <laughs> bye.